I am not going to go into the book of uh, Gospel of Luke today. I would like to read a passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 19. Uh, follow with me quickly. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. Father, we ask you to speak to us. Speak through my weaknesses and through my mouth, O God, so that we will be encouraged and strengthened by your word. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If Christ is not raised, that's what I want you to focus for a while today, as it is the Easter Sunday, uh, to be so definite about the date, we don't have a particular date. Uh, we only guess and calculate certain events and come to a probable date. So it is not the Sunday, or maybe, we don't know. But one thing we know, he was raised in one of these days. Amen? And because of his resurrection, the history no longer remained the same. So therefore, my first point today is that resurrection is the crucial part of the gospel. Resurrection is the key component of the gospel, so to say. Imagine if Christ came, like Mary received the message by Gabriel that you shall be born, I mean, pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit and you shall give birth a son of God. And he comes and preaches the message that we have in the Bible. He does miracles and amazing things happen. And thousands of people come to him. And he, he chooses many disciples. And then on the third day, he doesn't come. If he doesn't come out of the grave, or if only the, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Herods and the Pilate's army could bring the body of Christ and present to these disciples and what are you talking about? Look, your Lord is right here. Look at his body. If they could only produce his body, there would be no Christianity. It is the completion of what the plan of God was from the beginning. The day Adam and Eve fell and the day God walked into that garden and talked to man and said that your seed will crush the head of the serpent. The eternal plan of God culminated in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And therefore, if Christ is not raised, this is, the, this is the argument Paul is talking about. There were some people who were denying for the fact that maybe, okay, Christ is raised, maybe spiritually he was not raised bodily. Maybe it was a spiritual resurrection. He, he appeared some kind of ghost or something. But then the body of Christ could never be found and until today. People are still looking for his body. So resurrection is the key component part of the gospel. It is the central theme in Paul's gospel. That he died and that he rose again. The death and the resurrection of Christ plays vital role in, in fulfilling the plan of God to cross the head of the serpent, to take away the power of sin and death and the grave. And secondly, it is not only the central part of the gospel or the, the part of the plan of God, it is the key component of our confession. Uh, look at in verse, uh, let me read for verse 1 to 4. Uh, same chapter here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 to 4. Now brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. 
For what I received, I passed on to you as of the first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. The word of the gospel. He said, if you believe this, 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 then your faith is not futile. Now go back to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. He says, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The resurrection is not just the part of the gospel, it is the part and parcel of our confession. When we confess Jesus is our Lord and Savior, we confess that He is raised from the dead. He is alive. Why? Because if He is not raised, then our confession is useless. Unfortunately, there are many Christians who do confess Jesus as their Lord, but they do not believe in the resurrection. They have come up with all kind of explanation. And in fact, this has been the battleground for many people who oppose the divinity of Christ. They have no problem of accepting him as a good teacher, a good human being, a good role model, a good revolutionary. But when it comes to the deity or divinity of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they cannot comprehend because they deny the miraculous element in this world. And this of course, right from the time he was, he, he was raised from the dead, there was a rumors that disciples came and stole his body and all. But lately in the modern times, there came a school of thinking that called the historical Jesus. They began to, they, they, they said, we have to find the historical Jesus, not the Jesus of faith, not the Jesus that Christians believe in, but we need to go back and find out who this man Christ was. And there was a, a quest for historical Jesus. Many Christian theologians, so-called Christian theologians out of Germany and later on spread all over Europe and in America that they denied the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They denied the miraculous part of the gospel and they wanted to go back to the bare facts of history and demonstrate that Jesus was not even in existence or if he was, then he was just a some ordinary uh, uh, Rabbi or Rabbi. <coughs> that, that attracted a lot of attention from the non-Christians and there was a great emphasis on study of history to disprove many times the claims of the Bible. So the historical, G or the quest for historical Jesus has now died down because they could not find <coughs> out any other evidence that proved that Jesus did not rise from the dead. They could not disprove the miraculous part of the Bible, so to say. They worked hard and their argument all fell apart. And one of the current living scholar or the writer or a journalist is Lee Strobel that many of you may have heard. This man wanted to disprove or to find out whether who Christ is or whether he is what he said he is. And he started as a, as a detective or as a journalist who was investigating criminal cases and wanted to present an evidence that would prove that Jesus is not God. The Bible is not the word of God. It is a myth. But this quest for historical Jesus has failed. And Lee Strobel today is one of the most uh, important or influential believer in Christ. And then, you know, there was... A, there was a quest to, to discover the body of Christ uh, and then the great interest in archaeology. Uh, about 30, 40 or 50 years ago, there was a great interest in archaeology. People began to go into the Middle East and, and began to dig and dis excavate and look for all the evidences that would point that Jesus was just an ordinary man. The Bible is not what it claims to be. The archaeology. Today, nobody... I haven't met anyone who says, I am measuring in archaeology. There's no interest. No, they, rather, archaeology proved the validity of the Bible. Archaeology proved the claims of the Bible. And they had to take up their hands and say, I think 
we are going to lose if we depend on archaeology. Then came an emphasis on psychology or anthropology and began to study human mind, why people believe in certain things. And now even famous psychologists have come to a conclusion that if they take away religion, if they take away faith, if they take away faith in supernatural or if they take away the concept of a sin, then this human society or human mind is going to be terrible as Nietzsche has prophesied, that we would become the worst kind of animals that would destroy ourselves. And lately, the emphasis to deny the validity of the Bible or the resurrection of Jesus Christ or the Christian faith is still surrounding in astronomy. They want to study the universe out there somewhere. Maybe if we go beyond this, this limited horizon that we can see from our bare eyes. Maybe we can, we can find out some evidences out there that the Bible would be useless. And the further they go, the more confused they are. And praise God, the Word of God stands true forever. Amen. So it is the part and parcel of the Gospel. It is part of our confession. And if you're a Christian, and you have doubts about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then you're not a Christian. If you're a Hindu, you can deny all the Hindu scriptures. You can deny any faith in supernatural world and still you would be a Hindu. If you're a Jew, you can be an atheist, an agnostic, or even follow a different religion and still you would be called a Jew. If you're a Muslim, you may not believe what your book says, but there is no, no freedom to disbelieve. You have to remain a Muslim. Even though you don't believe, you can call yourself a Muslim. But in Christianity, if you deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is no way you can call yourself a Christian. You cannot be Christian. Or you cannot live as a Christian if you deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, my friend, yet there is an attempt to deny this amazing fact of history and fact of faith. So if you deny, if we deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ, uh, then what happens? If, if, they could, if the critics could prove that Jesus did not rise from the dead, then what is going to happen is that our faith is useless. It is futile. In verse 2 he says, in Corinthians 15, By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. In verse 14 he says, And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. And in verse 17 he says, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, you are still in your sin. Our faith is no better than any other faith if Christ is not raised. Your believing in Christ is useless so far as it is concerned to the salvation of your soul. Maybe you may have a good fellowship with the people. You, maybe you have some good ideas about religious world. But so far as the salvation of your soul is concerned, this faith, without the faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, without the supernatural element in the life of Christ, uh, our faith is no better than any other faith. Either a person is worshipping a tree, or an animal, or a human being, or stars and suns and the moon, and you may call on Jesus Christ. But if you do not believe in the power of resurrection, it is useless. Your sins have not been forgiven. You are still in your sin. And thirdly, if you deny the resurrection, then the history of the church is a lie. It's a sham. It's a fraud. Look at verse 15. Paul says, More than that, it, we are then found, if you deny Christ, then we are found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that He raised Christ from the dead. But He did not raise Him if, in fact, the dead are not being raised. There were an argument in Corinthians that we will not be raised, we will perish as we are. And Paul says, if we are not raised, Christ is not raised. If Christ is not raised, then what we have preached is a lie. We have deceived ourselves and we have deceived you. The whole 
prophetic world is a lie whole inspired scriptures are just a sham and whole history that until Paul's time and even for us today it is just a lie <coughs> but praise God praise God Jesus said he would rise on the third day and they could not find his body and even till today they are looking for the bone somewhere and they cannot find his word never failed and his church never failed either and these disciples if it was a lie how stupid they would be to die for a lie how stupid how foolish it would be to die for a lie that you fabricated you you made some kind of stories and you want to die for it uh, a couple of days ago in our country uh, there was a story about a young lady who was traveling in a bus and uh, and she found a, a bag behind her seat left or forgotten by another passenger she, she took that bag and the driver said oh, I don't know you just take it and she took the bag and she wanted to look and find out if there was any contact address that she could return and she found the telephone number of the man who was the owner of the bag. And as she continued to unpack, there was about a hundred thousand dollar and a diamond necklace in it. And uh, she struggled, according to her story, at first she struggled for three days what to do. And then she called the man and said, your bag is with me. And the man reportedly comes to her, offers her about $30,000, she refuses, and offers her a diamond necklace and refuses, and she became a hero for a while. And even a president of our country called her and said, I, I applaud you for your honesty and for your integrity. But after a few days, some journalists began to investigate, and it was just a sham. It's just they wanted to be so popular so famous and a president's faces mm. and they would face some discriminations now I mean I'm the criminal uh, case would be charged against the, the man who was carrying this amount of money illegally somewhere will they be willing to die for that she has already confessed it's just uh, just wanted to make a big story and wanted to be so famous and now they'll go but disciples right after the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, they were just lost bunch of group of people they they don't want to wait any further and the seven of the disciples we saw went back to fishing and say maybe we made a mistake or something like that but when they were filled with the Holy Spirit and since that day when Jesus Christ became so real, so personal to them in the power of the Holy Spirit, they were willing to die. The first one, in a, as recorded in the Bible, Stephen gives his life for preaching that Jesus rose from the dead. And James dies the second and preaching that Jesus raised, uh, was raised from the dead. Rest of the apostles died as martyrs, possibly even John and continue to die even today there are many Christians who are being killed because they preach that Jesus is raised from the dead but if they don't believe in the resurrection there is no gospel so it is not a lie the history of the church remains true and it will remain true until the last day not only that the, the worst part comes in verse 19. If Christ is not raised, Paul says, in 19, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. If, if you are believing in Christ, you don't care about resurrection, you don't care about eternity, you just believe for this life, uh, maybe there are many religions and you begin to choose and which one should I follow and that was my conclusion in the beginning part of my Christian life I said if I had to choose among the religions I think I would choose Christianity 
because it makes a lot of sense to me to live in this world as a human being. As a Hindu, I had looked into Hinduism, even I had uh, looked into uh, Islam and Buddhism was a part of Hinduism. Among them, if I had to choose, pragmatically, I would choose Christianity. And here Paul says, if I had chosen Christianity only for the practical reason for this life, what a pitiful life it is. In other words, if you don't have hope in the resurrection, life is going to be miserable. <coughs> Some of you live miserable life right here in this earth. And if you get lucky and uh, don't go through the pains and the suffering that majority of human beings go, you're gonna, we are going to face a day of atonement, a day of judgment, a day of atoning for our own life. And Paul, that's why, says, if we don't believe in the resurrection, then we are to be the most miserable human being. There is no hope left for us. But praise God, look at in verse 15, his, but praise God, we are not going to be miserable because we believe in the resurrection. Look in chapter 15, verse 50 onward, he says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flesh, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with immor imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? As, uh, the sting of death is in sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Let me read the last verse again, 58. Therefore, because we believe in the resurrection, because we have a hope for eternity, because this world is not our final destination, because this body is not the final resting place for us, therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Don't believe the lies of the devil. Don't be persuaded by the lies of the devil. Don't believe your own experiences. Don't believe the false teachings that come along. But believe in the gospel. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And believe in the power of his resurrection. Therefore stand firm. Let nothing move you. Neither sorrow. Nor joy. Nor pleasure. Nor uh, persecution. Nor suffering. Nor death. Nothing should be able to move you. But you stand firm in the Lord. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. It is not for pastors only. It is to every Christian who is writing. Always be ready because we have a work to do. We have a job to be done. And therefore always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that. Because you know that. Your labor in the Lord is not going to be in vain. Amen. Christian service has an amazing aspect in which we shall stand before the Lord himself and he will reward us in such a way that our mind would not be able to comprehend if we have to think right now. Jesus said, even someone comes along or you go along and someone says, oh, you're a Christian, so you must be thirsty and they give you a cup of cold water, that person will not lose his reward. Anything you do in Christ has an eternal consequences. Sometimes it may be false to motivate Christians to live godly life in order to receive reward. Of course, our motivation to live godly life should be the love of God. But I tell you, my friend, if we fail to live godly life in this world, I am sure there are going to be some place in heaven which we are going to miss. 
there is a reward. The Bible talks about you. There is a rewarding. Jesus gives clear example of parables. He said, you are faithful in little. Now I have much to give you. There is a place of rewarding. And that depends whether you believe in the power of resurrection. Whether you are waiting for that day. Now the greatest, my greatest uh, uh, ambition in life, I often tell, would be, when I die or when Jesus comes and I happen to meet him for the first time and he looks at me and he smiles and says, My son, my son, you are faithful in what I gave you. Now come in. If I can see the smiling face of Christ and his hand of approval on my <coughs> back, so to say, if he welcomes me, my son, I love you. I have a place for you. That smiling face of Christ is going to be a reality, my friend. Or the frowning face of Christ is also going to be reality. Many that day will stand before Christ and say, Lord, in your name we did this, we did that, we raised the dead, we healed the sick, we cast out the demand possessed, and all these things. There will be many people who will claim miraculous ministry. But somewhere along the life, their faith in Christ had some kind of defect. And Jesus promises them would, by saying that, get away from me. I don't even know you. I don't know who you are. So my friend, it is time to think about the power of resurrection. Not only for this life, but for the life to come. In this life also, Paul says, I want to know the power of his resurrection. Yes, because of that power, we have the ability to live for God. Paul says in Romans, he will raise our body with the same power that he raised Jesus Christ. He gives us the power to live for godly life. And, and But finally on that day, when you stand before Christ, you're going to, you're going to be rewarded for the work you've done. But if you don't believe in the resurrections, then Paul says, we should do, eat, drink, and be merry, and be happy. Well, tomorrow we will die and we will perish. What a miserable life. Some of us, we have crossed 40, 50. I don't know if some of you are here, 70, 60. We have, we have nothing to be joyful if this world is the only place, if this life is the only place. If resurrection is not our final hope, then what a, what a pitiful life it is going to be for us. Let us pray for a while and think about what Paul said. Whether our faith rests on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and the resurrection of our own bodies in that final day. And if that is the case, let us be faithful to God. Let nothing move you out of God, neither fear nor doubt, nor all kind of tribulations, but trust in God. Trust in the power of His resurrection. Believe God can raise you up. Whatever is dead in your life, He has the power to resurrect it. If your marriage is dying, he, he has the power to resurrect. If your job is dying, He has the power to resurrect. If your hope is dying, He has the power to resurrect. If your dreams are dead, He has the power to resurrect it. He is a God of hope. He is the one who lives and therefore we too live. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Once again, we give you glory. We thank you for the word that reminds us you were raised from the dead and you're sitting at the right hand of God in high and you rule and reign our life in this world by the power of your spirit. Father, if there is any one of us here who has doubt about resurrection, May the Holy Spirit convict. If, if there is anything that is dying in our life, we pray for the power of God to come and give them life. Whatever the area is <coughs> facing death, we pray for the life to come there, Lord. We thank you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.